It was some 2,000 years ago when the Romans were at Stockton Heath with a large settlement. Behind me you can see vehicles and diggers removing the soil at Stockton Heath Primary School as they prepare to uncover the Roman history of the village. I'm here this morning with Mark Lear who is going to explain a little bit more about what's happening here today. What I want to do is just say a little bit about the history of Wilderspool which will help to put the site into context. Now as I'm sure many of you know, um, Wilderspool was a big important industrial settlement in the Roman period. Starts off late in the first cent uh, century AD, reaches its peak in the second century AD, continues at perhaps a slightly lower level in the third and fourth century. Um, now the bulk of that site is underneath the Morrison supermarket and is protected as a scheduled ancient monument. But there was also subsidiary settlement along Lausher's Lane away to the east and alongside the road which ran south from the settlement down towards Northwich and Middlewich. And that road passes underneath Stockton Heath Primary School and there has been some work in this area in the past May excavated in the early 20th century and found some quite interesting finds. Remains of buildings, some of which had stone footings, um, also hearths, clay floors, pits and also the Roman road running south from the settlement. But obviously techniques in that day weren't quite so advanced and one of the things that he didn't do was put the site on a plan or a map so that we could tell exactly where he dug. We know roughly where it was, but we're not absolutely certain. It was thought that it was perhaps underneath the school, but I think recent research done by Earthworks Archaeological Services as part of this project suggests that in fact it may have been in the Roman Road area. But anyway, that, that gave us an idea of what was going on at Stockton Heath in the Roman period, and I think we would probably characterise it as ribbon development running south from the main settlement at Wilderspool alongside the road with houses, domestic activity, industrial activity alongside the road. So that was really the picture for many years. There were little bits of other work um, that have happened over the last century but no big excavations and really the work that's going on here today is the first modern excavation within Stockton Heath and really gives us an opportunity to see at a, quite a large scale how the settlement was laid out. I'm also here this morning with Lee Dodd who is the site director for Earthworks. Lee can you tell me a little bit more about the features that are being found? Okay so far we've uncovered um, the remains of a Roman timber building which we can see behind me by the lines that are shown in the sand yeah. and associated with that building we have a clay oven, clay and stone oven which again is directly behind me here uh, and that appears to be associated with the building and was probably either a bread oven or perhaps a corn drying kiln or something like that. Right. Further behind us as well where the chaps are working, we've also got some large Roman pits and there's one just directly behind me here. They're probably sand pits maybe that have later been used for the disposal of rubbish so they contain lots of sherds of Roman pottery and charcoal etc. Things like that. Obviously the main feature we've got to cross in the site from north to south is the main Roman road which dissects our excavation into two halves almost. Um, we've yet to look at that but we will be hand excavating some slots across that to try and find out its construction and different phases in its construction and, and the ditches that are associated with it. Much of the archaeology on the site, the Roman archaeology, has been uh, truncated by the numerous air raid shelters that were constructed during the Second World War. We've uncovered nine of those so far but we expect there's 12 in total. And as a site, how does it rate? Oh yeah, it's very, it's very significant archaeologically, um, not so much in the pre preservation of the archaeology which is to a degree not so well preserved uh, due to uh, centuries of ploughing and of course the area shelters as I've mentioned, but it does give us some more insight into how the Roman settlement of Stockton Heath and Wilderspool as a whole uh, has developed alongside the Roman road leading both north and south away from the major part of the settlement over at Wilderspool. Two 
2,000 years ago the Romans were living and working here in Stockton Heath and today we're here at Stockton Heath Primary School to see the excavations that are taking place to uncover some more of the Roman settlement before vital redevelopment work takes place at the school. Okay, so I'll show you some of the nice finds we've had from the site so far. This is one of the few metal finds we've had. It's a part of a Roman circular enamel brooch. You can just about make out some of the red and blue enameling on it. This would have been circular, much bigger, but we've only got approximately about a quarter of it surviving. That's the only piece of jewellery we've had so far for site. Most of the metal finds we've had have been iron nails and a couple of knife blades so far. We've had this unusual piece of stone sculpture, which is a possibly part of a cross head, so this may well be Saxon or later. We're not sure yet. And this was uh, found on top of the road surface, so it's just been reused as part of the cobbling on the road surface itself. This suggests that the road was actually constantly in use for many centuries. We've had lots of pottery from many pits and things, so we've had a lot of Roman pottery of various types. We've got uh, parts of uh, an amphora here from southern Spain that would have contained olive oil. Um, we've got part of locally produced uh, jars and flagons and bowls. This is probably made in the local kilns, Wilderspool type or somewhere else in the Cheshire sort of uh, lowland area. We've got uh, finer pottery imported from uh, France. This is some central Gaulish Samian ware. This is a cup, uh, second century in date. And we've got some pottery imported from probably the uh, Poole Arbor area of Dorset. This is black burnish ware uh, from a jar, again, second century in date. Uh, another nice piece of Samian ware here that you can just make out some gladiatorial figures on there with shields and swords and then uh, a beast, probably a lion or something there. Romans weren't too concerned about scale as you can see. That again, that's imported from France, probably a second century ago. Yeah. going on here today is the first modern excavation within Stockton Heath and really gives us an opportunity to see at a, quite a large scale how the settlement was laid out. Although it's important to emphasise we're only looking at a small part of it. Plenty of the rest of it remains preserved underneath the modern housing and elsewhere in the school playground. OK, I'm here this morning with Dr Fiona Grant, Site Supervisor. Dr Grant, can you tell me a bit more what's been happening at the site recently since my last visit two weeks ago? OK, well, this week we've been predominantly looking at, at the actual road itself, yeah. looking at the makeup of the road and um, the sequences in, in the development of the road. Um, as you can see, it's sunken uh, slightly in the middle where it's had more wear. Right. Um, so what we can tell by putting this slot through it is we can look at the repairs and we can look how it's widened and shifted slightly okay. along the alignment. Yeah. And is it a major Roman route? It is. It's, a, it's one, of the, one of the main roads, if you like, one of the north to south link roads. So yeah, that's, that explains the, the width of it, really. Right. Would it be domestic or would there be any military use, do you think? It, it would be for both, but originally, obviously, it was a, for a, a military use. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it would have continued in use for domestic purposes right. as well. And there's some amazing curbstones coming out, I believe. They are. They were, they're rather substantial, <laughs> a lot bigger than we thought they were going to be. And what's interesting, we can actually see that the curb has actually shifted over time right. as we've had repairs right. and, and changes. And I assume road. that the sandstone would be a source locally? It would be, yes. It would be a local yeah. local stone. Yeah. What sort of time scale is there in actually building a Roman road of this sort? How long would it have taken them? I don't know. It, it <laughs> it's fairly it's, open book. Isn't it, it is. Yes. Yeah. It was. I mean, originally that you would have um, the road would have been laid out by the surveyors, yeah. um, and the original road would have been laid. But as I said, it's um, it's changed over time. It's been it's been developed right. and it's been. Um, it's been repaired as well. Right. So. And what direction are we running here? Is it it's almost directly north-south right. on this site here. What other features have come up on the site that have quite excited you recently? Okay, well we've been um, we've been doing some more work on the the building uh, plots over at the far eastern side of um, yeah. the site. Um, they're very delicate because they're 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 timber buildings, so they just um, they just show as stains really in the sand. Yeah. Um, and obviously with the weather that we've been having recently, we've had to keep them under cover. But it's quite interesting because we have a sequence of building events in that area, um, and we, we've also found evidence of a fire in the area mm. that has burnt down one of the walls, which has then tumbled into um, one mm. of the 
stitches in that area. And is that speculative as to whether that was an accident or could it have been? There's no way of knowing. It was almost certainly an accident. It would have been quite common with timber buildings yeah. and obviously with fires. It was your only sort of heating. Right. So there was no process. Roman fire brigade in those days? No, <laughs> not as, no, no evidence of yeah. it anyway. Well, I believe you've still got some more artefacts that we'll take a look at in a short while. But for now, thank you very much. Okay, you're Cheers. welcome. I'm here this morning also with Colin Sharrett who's doing the metal detecting on site to try and recover the metal artefacts that could tell us a lot about what's been happening here. Colin, how's it all going? Uh, fine really, uh, extremely exciting site for, for the archaeology side of it, metal, metal wise, um, with it being such a sensitive site, I'm not, I'm not allowed to walk everywhere, but yeah, yeah. what I have detected, uh, i.e. on this road, we've had coins out of there actually in, in the road, so that's very datable evidence and some bronze, copper alloy fittings as well, which are obviously all gone away for I identification. But it's, uh, we just keep hoping that um, stuff comes up as they dig into the road and I'm, I'm here to check the spoil of course uh, and work under the control of the archaeologists of course. And how many days a week do you have to attend? I, I pop up here two or three times a week, uh, see what's going on, if there's nothing I'll, I'll nip off down to Chester working with guys in the, in the Grosvenor Park at the moment, the, yes. with Dan Garner and, and Chester County Council there. So. But this is another example of metal detecting and archaeology oh, working yeah, together. Fine. Hand hand. Yeah, yeah. I worked with this group Earthworks for over ten years now and it actually it was the first archaeological unit that um, took on from the northwest, anyway, as far as I'm aware, a metal detectors to assist, and it, we've gone on from strength to strength with that. You know, right. really well, I won't cool. keep you. You've obviously, got a lot of important yeah, work to do. Yeah, I'll some more coins. Uh, I'll catch up with you later. <laughs> Thanks, James. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Okay, so uh, after about another two weeks since we last saw you, I'll show you some more finds we've had subsequently. Um, here's some pottery that we've cleaned up, um, which was used in our open day to show the public. What you can see here is uh, fragments from a single Roman mixing bowl called the Mortaria and this one, all these pieces joined together, but you can see this one's got the maker's stamp on here unfortunately it's split right down the middle but that's the uh, potter Decmitius and he was a local Wilderspool potter so this, this uh, mixing bowl was probably made in the kilns just uh, located up the road from here and also more locally produced ways, this fragment from a colander, you can see the holes pierced through the base of this vessel there, so that's just like a strainer like you'd use a colander today, and that's another Wilderspool product. More fragments of our amphorandals from southern Spain, and some nicely decorated Roman Samian ware there with some uh, running lions and other beasts uh, and moulded into that pot there. That's from France again. Um, we've also had some stone objects, including fragments of uh, quern stones for grinding um, wheat into flour. This is uh, volcanic rock, as you can see by the holes in it. It's kind of like a pumice stone that would have been imported into the country, but you can see the radiating lines here from what would have been a circular stone, and as it ground round, the, uh, the flour would have been channeled out and would be collected up around the head, around the edge. And that piece was actually used as stone packing in a post hole for a timber building located just behind me. Um, metal finds, again we've not had too many but we've had a couple more since the last filming. And one of them being this nice coin from the Emperor of the Emperor Trajan there from the late 1st or early 2nd century. So that's in quite good condition that one. And another coin from the same, uh, the same Emperor Trajan. And uh, this is a smaller one, but this one's uh, a small silver coin. You can see there's a portrait there on that one. And uh, that's it really for metal finds so far, but uh, Colin the Metal Detectorist has picked up a couple more coins today off the Roman road surface. But uh, we've not had much in the way of jewellery since the brooches we showed you last time. This week sees the closure of the dig with backfill ready for the development of the new school buildings. I've been invited today to talk to David Vaughan, archaeologist, to have a look at the Roman well that's been uncovered and many other exciting features. I'm here with David Vaughan, archaeologist on site. David, can you tell me a bit more about this wonderful well we've found? Um, yeah, smashing Roman well that we excavated over the last week or so. Um, as you can see, really well stone lined. Um, we have we believe got wells elsewhere on site, but this is the one with the structure. 
Uh, we know that the stonework goes down further. Uh, although we can't actually dig any further for safety reasons, we know that the well itself goes to a depth of about five to six metres. We've done a, an auger or a core for environmental samples and within that we've found evidence that the sand just keeps going down. Now that suggests the stonework will follow it to give it stability and once it hits the natural, the more stiff boulder clay, then the stones obviously won't be necessary. David, can you tell me something about the state of preservation of this well? Yeah, as you can see it's remarkable really. Um, we're fairly confident that it's been robbed though because um, we're now in the well um, cut the original would have stood proud of the natural which surrounds us, um, so the stonework has been taken. The large pit around us quite possibly is what they call a robber cut, where a subsequent um, society has come and taken and reused the stones, possibly still Roman. Um, but as you can perhaps see from the, some of the flat stones on the top here, they're quite broken, they're not of an equal height, so there has been some uh, robbing. Having said that, it seems to survive to quite a depth, um, and certainly as far as we've dug, the stonework continues down into the ground. Right, now I believe you mentioned earlier some coring, some sampling. Can you tell me how deep that went? Yeah, we, um, we cored to around about five metres below where I'm currently standing, so about six metres in total depth of the well. Yeah. And that's allowed us to do a number of things. Um, we were able to look at the stratigraphy, or if you like, the makeup of the fill, and that told us that it's still mostly sand all the way down to the natural. It also gave us the opportunity to find the depth of the natural. Um, again, it was largely sand, but uh, some boulder clay. And by uh, supposition, the stonework probably supports the depth of sand to give it stability. The other main benefit is for environmental research. Um, one of my colleagues will be studying some of the pollen that she may be able to extract from the fill core that we took. Um, and I'll be looking at uh, some of the beetle evidence which we also recovered, which will also give us an indication of the environment at the time the well was uh, in use. Okay, now obviously you haven't excavated much deeper, is that for safety reasons? Absolutely, I mean where I'm stood now is fairly robust, um, but it wouldn't take much um, with a spade or a shovel to potentially cause a collapse, not necessarily of the structure, but certainly of the fill, and it's simply just too dangerous to, to dig on. Right. So what are the plans for this feature now, do we know? Um, the jury's out on that one as part of um, discussions going on around us. The, a nice idea, of course, would be to have it on display. That may not be logistically possible. Um, obviously, I don't know what the plans are in terms of the building layout, etc., etc., or indeed the engineering possibilities, but um, it's certainly under discussion. Dave, well, that looks a very exciting find. Can you tell me more about it? It is. It's lovely. It's um, quite an unusual uh, shaped pot, as you can see. Um, it's locally made from the fabric and it came from one of our deeper features on site, uh, probably another well, not stone lined, but certainly deep enough and wet enough to, to have been a well, and we uh, went down to the bottom with that one and located this. So the wet conditions would obviously help with preservation? It would, with, with pottery it's not so essential. Um, it's really when you're talking about organic materials like wood and leather that the wet becomes uh, uh, superior conditions. Having said that, it wouldn't have done it any harm, as you can see, it's survived very well, and, We've kept the soil or sand in it, really, to keep it together until it's cleaned up and analysed properly. And was it found in the ground in more or less one piece, although cracked, or was it scattered? Exactly like this, really. Um, I didn't actually find it, can't take the credit for that, but um, I think this piece comes away, but it's actually located together and um, is so obviously part of the same vessel. Sadly, not, nothing else from it was there either, but... Uh, but nonetheless, a great find. Absolutely, yeah. Hi, well, James, this is the, the latest feature we've uh, excavated. Um, as you can perhaps pick out, it's a bit ephemeral, but we've got the remains of uh, some sort of structure, almost certainly timber, and the narrow slots are the timber slots for that, and we've also got some post holes, which, as we're cleaning up, we're exposing and investigating. Um, it mirrors the one that we found on that side of the site in terms of its um, overall basic presence. However, the interesting thing is just over here to my right, um, which are these ditches. Um, we've got a series of cuts here where the ditch or a channel seems to be running from that direction in the south all the way to here and then turns towards the east which um, suggests something intriguing but not only that we've then got later cuts also Roman from the contents that we found in its fill but they're cutting into these earlier channels so there's a lot of activity and then finally on this point there's another ditch two ditches in fact coming through across uh, across ways with more post holes and trenches. So there's obviously a lot of activity here um, and we're currently investigating what the structure might represent. Hi 
I hope over the past five films I've given you an insight into the work being carried out here and given the site the exposure that it richly deserves. Archaeology is important and it's enjoyed by many people, both the public and those who are experts. Stockton Heath is a very important area and full of evidence of Roman occupation. It has been both a pleasure and a privilege to be able to report on these excavations over the past couple of months. Is this the end of the story? Certainly not. I've been invited back in a short while to make a film about all the artefacts that were recovered here at the site once they've been cleaned and conserved. That's something really, really special and something worth looking forward to. This is James Barm for Warrington.tv, Stockton Heath Primary School.